Hello, my name is Andrew O. Jackson. I am creating this video series titled The Personal Power of Chi, A Revolution in Sports Psychology, with the intent that athletes of all levels, abilities, and no matter what their sport, can understand, access, and actualize their evolutionary self of strength, speed, stamina, agility, reflexes, cutting, and success. Chapter two, evolutionary significance of feeling good and feeling bad is about how good feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings have an evolved correlation with empowerment, with health, well-being, and effective and successful decision-making, prowess, and their actualization. And bad feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings have an evolved correlation with their negation. To have a superior world-class performance, an athlete must be in a feeling good state of being. That is the nature of human evolution. Before we begin, I want to reiterate that the terms cognitive and cognition refer to activities and process of awareness and knowing of the mind such as perceiving, conceiving, remembering, reasoning, judging, imagining, and problem solving, where understanding and comprehension of thoughts, ideas, and beliefs can project future consequences and events. I also want to state that I group emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings together because they either feel good as an evolved indicator of a healthy biochemical and neurological physiology, or they feel bad as an evolved indicator of an unhealthy biochemical and neurological physiology. Does a coach or an athlete have the cognitive emotional awareness to understand that bad feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings are evolutionary indicators of a disempowering, disabling, and ineffective neurological and biochemical physiology? And then does the coach or athlete have the capacity to reprocess their disempowering, emotionally negative cognitions, especially during the heat of competition on the field of play, into empowering, emotionally positive cognitions that correlate with a healthy biochemical and neurological physiology that precipitates the strength, speed, stamina, agility, reflexes, cunning, and success, and the actualization of a superior world-class performance? <clears throat> we all have been taught what a mountain is, and because of this, we have a common belief that a mountain exists independently of our observation of it. But the mountain exists as it does because we have been taught to believe it so. The mountain range I'm going to talk about is evolutionary significance of feeling emotionally good and feeling emotional bad. Good feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings have an evolved correlation with empowerment, with health, well-being, effective and successful decision-making prowess, and their actualization. Bad feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings have an evolved correlation with their negation. Negative bad feeling emotions like fear and anger are unique because of their connection to the biochemical adrenaline boost to the body. This adrenaline shot has proven to be an evolutionary short-term survival technique, but its long-term consequences are very problematic. Understanding the power of emotions and what that power is, is vital for every athlete to successfully compete, no matter what their sport and what their position is in that sport. Not until emotions are understood will their true power be revealed. There is an evolutionary significance to feeling good or feeling bad emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings that has not been fully recognized by current psychological, emotional theory, and cognitive behavior therapies. What is the evolutionary significance of good and bad feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings? Would humanity survive the evolutionary mill in our early cognitive emotional development if good feelings of adventuring out for the hunt correlated with confusion and ataxia? that is, in part coordination. 
Would our earliest ancestors survive if they felt strong, but were actually physically weak while confidently adventuring out into the savannas to hunt during the heat of the day or climbing trees in search of fruits, berries, and nuts? How about crossing rapid moving streams to fish or to get to the other side? How about in today's world? What is the survivability of a drunk who conf confidently gets into a car to drive across town in a rush hour traffic? Imagine the basics of life behaviors such as breathing or eating were so emotionally painful or their lack was so pleasurable to bring about suffocation, starvation, and death. Such an emotional psychological correlation would lead to the demise of an individual and their genetic line. If this were a genetically predisposed or inherited condition, or even a genetically developed predisposition to learn such a behavior, such a false positive correlation between emotions, emotions and physiology would hinder personal and genetic survival. Therefore, there is a natural correlation between feeling good and exhibiting healthy physiological behaviors and functions. How would a genetic line survive? One, if the body's need for water did not stimulate the mind to produce the imagery of obtaining water. Or two, if this imagery of obtaining water correlated with negative feeling emotions. If the body needs water, this need must correlate with the mental act of imagining water and with the positive emotions associated with finding and drinking water. There's a correlation between imagining the necessities of life and experiencing positive emotions. If instead there was a correlation such that the imagery of food, water, and shelter brought about negative feeling emotions, then the basics of life would be avoided and lead to an evolutionary dead end. To survive and even to thrive through the evolutionary mill, bad feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings must have an evolved correlation with weakness, confusion, impaired coordination, and disempowerment. And good feeling emotion, moods, attitudes, and feelings must have an evolved correlation with mental sharpness and acuity, physical health, well-being, and empowerment. If this were not so, our prehistoric ancestors were not likely to survive to adulthood where they would pass on their genetic code to the next generation. Good feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings have an evolved positive correlation with health, well-being, and effective decision-making prowess and their actualization. Negative bad feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings have an evolved correlation with the lack of health, well-being, and effective and successful decision-making prowess and their actualization. When an athlete emotionally feels good, they are allowing a synergistic harmony of the mind, body, and consciousness that then has the capacity to respond to the demands needed for those extraordinary performances required in competition. Good and effective decisions and their actualization cannot be made in a vortex of negative emotions. An athlete's physical capacity to perform diminishes the more they ignore their cognitive emotional negative state of being. Negative, bad feeling emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings have an evolved correlation with the lack of health, lack of well-being, and effective and successful decision-making prowess and their actualization. To have the physiological capacity for situation awareness, comprehension, and response, that is to have the neurological and biochemical physiology demanded by a world-class performance, emotions, moods, attitudes, and feelings must be in a feeling good state of being. Ignorance is to speak of desire itself as the cause of suffering, rather than understanding that it is a continual cognitive awareness upon the lack of that which is desired, wanted, and intended 
that is the cause of suffering, hardship, and failure. Without an accompanying text or explanation of cognitive emotional reprocessing behaviors, preschool and primary school language and literary educators are indoctrinating their students with an erroneous psychology, psychological linguistics of emotional driven behavior and control and sabotaging their students' future. These same teachers can augment their students' emotional awareness and understanding with the readily available age appropriate cognitive emotional reprocessing content. Karin Brosh Fieldman and Rebecca Camisio have developed a wonderful textbook called The Resilience Workbook for Kids, 32 Skills to Build I Can Do It Muscles. I have written two books on this subject, Cognitive Emotional Health Education, a Primary and Secondary School Overview, and the personal power of chi, an athlete's heritage of strength, speed, stamina, agility, reflexes, cunning, and success. My publications are freely available as downloadable PDFs from my, my websites, symbioticpsychology.com and emotionalevolution.com. Cognitive emotional reprocessing health education is a must in education social services, mental health, and criminal justice reform? Why are gun manufacturers being held accountable for society's lack of cognitive emotional reprocessing education that is necessary for individual health, well-being, and successful and effective decision-making and their actualization? As in sailing and in life, the opportunity is there to enjoy. It is our responsibility to make it so. Success depends on it. Effective and successful decisions will not be actuated in a vortex of negativity. Enjoying life is necessary for physical health. Enjoying life is necessary for mental well-being. Enjoying life is necessary for effective and successful decision-making. Enjoying life is necessary for at the actualization of that which is wanted, desired, and intended. If an athlete or coach wants, desires, and tends to succeed in sports competition and to have a world-class performance, they must enjoy themselves. For within their joy lies the empowered, good-feeling, neurological, and biochemical physiology of the brain and body that is necessary to support and maintain a world-class performance. Because joy has an evolved correlation with health, well-being, and success, we have evolved to be joyous beings. The greatness of human life experience emerges from the flames of individual desire arising out of hell's fire conflicts on earth. Intention is forged in these fires. Emotions align our journey with these new intentions. Each succeeding generation will have its own mountains to climb and waters to cross with their own stars to navigate towards. Intent is that guiding star and our emotions perceive its light. The more joyous the feeling, the more harmonious and powerful the wonders revealed through life's journey. When joy and good feelings permeate your life, practice, and competition, good things happen. I wish you all a successful and joyous life. It is there for you to enjoy and to make whatever you desire, want, and intend. Namaste.